For the last season of my engineering team's competition that my engineering team participated in, I designed a drone with what I called the gimbaled rotor, where the rotor was effectively on a gimbal that allowed it to pivot um, not only front and back, but side to side. This allowed the drone to maneuver without having to use differential thrust, which means it didn't have to tilt, it could just stay level and then move around. And for a drone that had wings and had to carry a heavy package, this was absolutely necessary for us. Now, in doing research behind that design while designing it, I found that not a lot of people had done that before. I couldn't really find anything identical to what we were shooting for. And after the competition was over, I decided to take it upon myself to make the world's first gimbal rotor drone. Because I'm limited with the materials that I have access to, and also the level of technology that I have around me, I had to kind of find a different method of doing this. As trying to print the large blade guard that the motor would have to use as a gimbal was not really viable. So what I did instead, I developed this dual pivot system with the micro servos I had laying around and these kind of housings that I designed. So first we got the drone arm itself and it has a housing for the first micro servo. This one allows the whole system to pivot side to side. Now after that, there's the motor mount. As you can see, the motor is mounted right over here. It's angled on these sides, so that way there's easy access to these screw holes. And that also has its own housing for the micro servo. And when the micro servo moves here, it allows the entire motor mount to move back and forth. So now with both of these combined, the entire drone can stray from side to side like this, and also front and back like this. With both of these combined, it can do a lot of maneuvering without having to tilt at all, which can be a huge advantage for things like maybe carrying things that have to stay level. Now for the actual body itself, I decided to make it modular so that if something breaks on the arm, I don't have to reprint the entire drone body, I can just reprint the arm and then repair the drone. Because I'm 3D printing all of this, making it modular is a lot better because I don't have to wait 20 hours just to reprint the whole thing because something small broke up. For the arms to attach to the body, I designed these cavities where the arm could almost press fit into. That way it could be nice and snug and not be too loose to the point where it would wiggle around while the drone's trying to fly and cause stability issues. And then the design of the cavity itself, it goes around this entire area of the arm where the most force is gonna be from the weight of the thrust from coming from the motor. So that way the PLA filament I'm using won't break and it'll stay nice and structurally sound. Now to keep the arm in that cavity, I developed these arm caps that are perfectly sized to the cavity and have the screw holes to kind of secure it on. Now, because of all these cables that are coming from the eight servos and then the ESCs for the motors, I had to make sure I was cable managing it properly. So that way the cables don't get stuck on one of the pivoting part of the entire drone. So to do that, I catted all these holes at the bottom. These hexagonal ones are for the battery strap to make sure the battery is secure. And then these holes are for the servo cables to come up and then plug into the receiver that'll be on top of the battery. This little cube is a kind of mock-up I have for the battery. So that way all the servo cables will be properly organized and managed and nothing will get tangled. Now the CAD that I made for the 2022 engineering team was one of the most complex things I've made. And this was almost harder because I not only had to use my extensive SOLIDWORKS knowledge that I've gained through the years, but I had to use the knowledge I gained from my internship, which was regarding things like tolerancing, manufacturing, and actually developing the things that you CAD digitally. So I had to make sure everything was 3D printable, that everything was structurally sound, nothing would break. And I had to make sure everything was tolerance right, that I had the proper press fit for the arms. And then also to make sure that everything was balanced, that the center of gravity was right at the center of the drone. And just to make sure that this thing would properly fly. Now, after the CAD came the actual drone. And voila, this is the actual drone printed by that 3D printer right over there. As you can see, I kind of went for my black and red color scheme. Uh, excuse the uh, orange. I had to make some repairs after my first test flight. Basically, you can see all the wires. I promise this is cable managed. Doesn't look like it, but it does make things a lot neater. So yeah, as I said before, there are a lot of wires here. We've got all the ones for these front pivoting, and all the ones for the side pivoting motors, and then all the ESC, because they need the power that goes to the motor, but also the signal of how much power to actually give the motors that comes from the receiver. Which is paired to this controller right over here. Conventionally, drones have a flight controller, 
because they use differential thrust to move, so they have to control how much power goes to the motors based on the inputs from the controller. So there's like an onboard flight computer to kind of manage that. Because the only thing that's really happening for my maneuvering is just moving a servo, I didn't really need a flight controller, so I just didn't bother. Instead what I did is because all the motors will just be receiving the same power, I took the power from the motor and I used a, uh, a like one to four splitter for the XC60 connector that the motors and the battery use. So it just takes all the power from the battery, splits it up, into four of these power signals going to each of the motors. And since they're all gonna receive the same signal of how much power to input, I took the ESC cable uh, for each of the ESCs, put them all into a bunch of Y splitters. That's what the real mess of all of this is, all the Y splitters I had to do and had to like daisy chain. But I turned all of those into just one, one of the wires and that is being put into channel two right here. All of those are just going into one of these receiver ports. So then after all of that, then we've got all of the servos. So I have the front uh, strafing tilt servos linked to one wide splitter, the back linked to another, since I want this to strafe side to side, but also be able to turn. So the front and back have to be in separate controls. And then the tilt front and back for all of these, I just linked all of them into one input, since they're all gonna go front and back at the same time. All right, so I've got this turned on. As you can see, everything's primed up. This one's a bit shaky because the micro servo can't really handle it, which is the main issue with this so far. But as you can see, when I do right stick up, you've got that first level of pivoting. When I do side stick, I've got that front straight. And for the back, I've got the back straight. Now, and then also lastly, turn up the power got all of that. Yeah, that one's a bit shaky. But yeah, that is the fully functioning drone. Now, as you'll notice, I mentioned before how I needed to make some repairs after the first test flight. You'll see this shaky little servo here. Now this motor wasn't really working right. So the big problem with this drone is the micro servos. As you'll notice, they're just not really strong enough to handle the load. So my first test flight that I did, didn't go super well. It took off, but then immediately these micro servos that are meant to handle the strafe, could not handle the strafe. And the drone immediately kind of went sideways and then crashed, which is what caused those pieces to break. So in a future iteration, I plan to use torque servos instead, and also kind of just make this design a bit lighter. It's, it's not light right now, it is kind of heavy. And that's just because of the pure size that I made this. I use these really large blades, because all these rotors need to pivot with these long blades, I needed to make sure the arms were long enough so that the rotor was far enough away from the body so that the blade wouldn't hit the body. So with all of that, this drone just really turned out huge. I mean, just look at the size of this thing. It's pretty awesome, but not super functional yet. So in the future, I'm planning on really modifying this to be more effective. And you know, whatever happens in the future, or if I end up going, I wanna utilize whatever I can get my hands on, all these advanced technologies that really exist in the world, and really just develop this design into something that can really change the world. I mean, drone technology, I feel like this is the future, and something like this, I mean, right now it just seems like a, you know, a cool high school project idea, but who knows what unknown advantages this really has. Like, for what I did with the engineering team submission. I mean, this sort of technology can be utilized to really improve a lot of things in the industry. With that, this has been what I do in the summer for fun. Most people play video games, I build drones and play video games.